Hi, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. And this is the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that wonders, is 2011 the new 1941? Is that a Pearl Harbor reference? No, it's it's nas national championship jokes. Oh, you. On tonight's show. I think RG3 is who we're going with here. Reed, do almost half the From season. Star Wars? Close, close. That was his father. Not that we would know, because we're both big Tulane fans. Tulane fans. Now, go here's the speaking of green wave. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The new yep. coach, Curtis Johnson, very exciting. Yep. From atop Red Mountain at Vulcan Park and Museum, it's the Iron Bowl Hour. Reed, let's go ahead and uh, film this agree to disagree that for some reason the producers insisted that we continue to do outside. Great idea on their part. It's about 20 degrees. We definitely have the best producers that work on this show. Yeah. This weekend in New York, the prestigious Heisman Trophy will be awarded to one of five finalists. Monty Ball, Andrew Luck, Trent Richardson, Tyran Matthew, and Robert Griffin III. Who wins the award and why? All right, uh, we'll find out soon enough, well, but I yeah. think I can go ahead and predict it now. Okay. This is a pretty easy formula. As we know, the Heisman Award goes to the best player on the best team. The best team is LSU. The best player on that team is the Honey Badger. He's going to be in New York. He wins the award. Easy breezy. We're done. Let's move on to the next question. Well, well hang on now. You're right about some of that, but I'm not sure that it has to go to the best player on the best team. It doesn't have to go to that player. Oh, yeah, it does. I think it's the best player in college football. So no, it goes no, no, to. no, 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 no. Listen, let's, let's remember, uh, for example, now last year, Cam Newton was the best player in college football. Right. So that's why you're getting fooled into thinking that. Think back a year before that. Mark Ingram, right, not the best player in college football, the best player, though, on the best team. He wins the award. That's the formula. I'm, I, I'm not sure that's actually how it works, Reed. Uh, I think RG3 is who we're going with here. Reed, through almost half the From season. Star Wars? Close, close. That was his father. Oh, okay. his father was from okay. Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, through almost half the season, Reed, he had more touchdowns than incompletions. Hear, hear me again. More touchdowns than incompletions. Look, I don't even know who C3PO is, Will. <laughs> what I do know is that LSU is already the national championship team. If you read what you know, John Solomon writes and all that, he's they're the best team in the country, and he's the best player. Every time somebody punts it to him, and I know once again, you, you don't know that necessarily from watching, for example, the Alabama LSU game, because Alabama's punter can't really get it all the way back to where Tyron Matthew is. But when someone does punt to him, he runs it back for a touchdown. He's the best player. He wins the award. I think you're basing this solely off the SEC championship game, which was fantastic. That performance, especially that second uh, run back. If I remember correctly, he had 14 run backs for touchdown on punts in that game. <laughs> I'm not sure you do remember that correctly. Uh, but anyway, Reed, let's not forget that he was suspended for part of the season due to smoking, uh, what is it, synthetic <clears throat> marijuana? Yeah, it's not even real marijuana. It's just synthetic marijuana. And as as we remember from last year, Reed, they mm. say character really plays into who should win the Heisman. I think you have to think about that when you think about Taran Matthew. I'll tell you what, I think I am going to forget about that suspension. <laughs> okay. What I am going to remember is the formula, best player, best team, Tyron Matthew, congratulations on your Heisman Award. <laughs> A percentage of points that make up the ridiculous BCS formula come from the coaches poll. Many of the coaches who vote are not able to watch any teams play except for the ones in their conference. Should we do away with the coaches poll? Uh, yes, of course we should get rid of it. It's one of the many things that's wrong with college football and the way we pick a champion. As we saw this year, it's just far too subjective. Okay, well, I'd, listen, here's what's good about the coaches poll, right? Who knows football, right? A bunch of nerds like Paul Feinbaum who didn't even play mm. football when they were in college. They were no. journalism majors too and they nerdy. sit around. Yeah, no. The people who know football are the coaches, right? And I like having a coaches poll. I think it's it's a good thing. It gives them a chance to weigh in. Uh, and these coaches are going to vote with integrity. And I know someone started a rumor that Nick Saban voted Oklahoma State behind Stanford. That Reed, can't be true. Reed, he did. <clears throat> they, they You've heard the rumor about that. No, no, no. They published the uh, the votes. He, he did. He, he, he I, I promise you, well, he did. Uh, voted the fourth. All right. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine, that, whatever, leave that out. Okay. I still say that these are the experts on college football. They ought to have a say. This is their system. It's their teams that, that are being decided upon. I think they should have right. a vote. See, that's the problem. It's their teams. So, therefore, they're voting their team higher, as we saw, and they're voting teams that could compete with them lower. Okay. This happened before, Reed. We heard Mike Stoops voted Auburn in 2004 really low just to just – to, Make that, sure that Oklahoma. Gosh, this is really secure, discouraging. I'm serious. Yeah. I hate to hear this because I'm I like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm starting to think maybe we should do away with it. But here's what I'll say. Okay. I'm still going to stick with my argument because okay. by we contract have we have we to have disagree to, yeah. about this. Good. Okay. I still think these are the experts. What here's what I would like to see 
it's only the last coaches poll that is made public, right? Right. I think that these polls should be made public throughout the year so that we can maybe try to have a, a little more integrity, right? Right. Through, and see okay. how people are voting as this as the season goes on. Let's keep the experts voting, but let's make it public. Now, you, you just talked about about Paul Fimo. Is that because he throws the ball like that? That's part of the reason. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can agree with you on that. And wears glasses. What a nerd. Super nerd. In a four-team playoff scenario, you would have number one LSU, number two Alabama, number three Oklahoma State, and number four Stanford. Would people still complain if the final game was Alabama versus LSU? Uh, yeah, yeah, because what? because that system would not fix anything, right? This is remember what we have. The problem in college football is we have a BCS system, right? That right. is illogical, or at least allows illogical things to happen, right? Correct. Yeah. So we have teams like Alabama this year, who right. is a great football team, make no mistake about it, but they're not the best team in their conference. Therefore, it is impossible for them to be the best team in the country. It is illogical. It does not compute, right? So the system where you have, well, let's take these four teams, and they're the four best ones, and let them play off, it still could potentially result in a team that's not the best in the country being named the best in the country. So it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I can tell you're upset because you're doing a lot of this. Well, it's stuff. a robot yeah. thing. Oh, it does Look, not compute. Most people yeah. are upset about the fact that Oklahoma State did not get a chance. No chance. Sure. Zero chance yeah. to play. A four-team playoff would give them that chance for you. So I think everyone <sighs> would be fine with it. If Alabama won their, their part of the playoff Listen, and then made it, it's Oklahoma fine. State being in would be a good thing because they, are, they would be one conference champion. Listen, a, a logical system would be this. Let's have eight conferences. Let's let's rearrange the conferences just a little bit. Okay. Let's have eight major conferences okay. in Division One football, sure. right? And throughout the season, you try to win your conference. Okay. And if you do, then you're one of eight teams who are invited to an eight-team playoff. All the conference champions play each other in a playoff, and next thing you know, the winner is, is logically the best team in the country. Okay, I still disagree with you on the main question that was asked here, but I think I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Does that mean we don't get paid this week? I, I'm I not exactly sure that? how that works, once again, from a contractual sort of standpoint. But listen, I am right, so I commend you for agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, this would this would fix everything, maybe even bring peace to the Middle East. Up next on the Iron Bowl Hour, a behind-the-scenes look at Tammy from the Paul Feinbaum Show. A redneck is somebody that talks without thinking and don't care. War eagle, fly down the field, or to conquer, never to yield. War eagle, fearless and true, fight on orange and blue. She's not putting on a show. She is that enthused and passionate about whatever it is she may be saying. She's the real deal. She's one of the most uh, real people I've ever met. She's a really good fan. She's not a bad fan until right. Paul kisses her off. Hi, I'm Will Lockamy for the Iron Bowl Hour. We're here in Kellyton, Alabama, which you've never heard of and neither have I. It's actually outside of a town that you've also never heard of. We're about an hour away from any kind of civilized life and we're in front of the house of Tammy from the Paul Feinbaum Show. Let's go meet Tammy, spend the day with her and see what she knows and what it's like to be a local celebrity in these parts. How did you initially start listening to Paul years ago or how long have you been listening? I started Oh my goodness, I had a FedEx driver come in one day, and that FedEx driver told me, he said, Tammy, you need to listen to Firebomb. And I started listening, and they was all in bams going on about how Georgia about it, and that was my first call ever. Hey, Paul. Hi there. How you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm a first-time caller, and I'm probably the redneckest person that I ever called. Well, first of all, I'm an Auburn fan, and always will be. I just kept hearing this, Paul! It was like, I wasn't sure if it was a goat in heat, and finally, we landed on Tammy, and it, it turned out to be her, and she was yelling about something I had said about Auburn. Okay, so have you always been an Auburn fan your whole life? Well, ever since I was six years old. When I went to Auburn with my uncle, and he took me to the art class, Yeah. and all that, while I was there, the cheerleaders came in, and right. they helped me do a little bit of stuff, and from then on, I was I was hooked. So, tell me about Alabama, and, and your honest, actual feelings about the University of Alabama and people that root for that school. They all stink. But you, I mean, you say that, but your daughter. She stinks too. I get all over her butt all the time. All right, Marlena, the eldest of the uh, Tammy children, you're a big Alabama fan. Your mom, obviously, a big Auburn, Auburn fan. Auburn. How did that work? Like, why did you end up Alabama and your mom Auburn? Um, 
I spent a lot of time with Mima and Granddaddy, my mom's parents, right. and they ruined me from the get-go. Gotcha. Big Al and the Roll Tide, and it was that's all it took. All right, so your mom's still, she's not an old lady at all, but she is a grandmother. She's got yes. uh, several grandchildren. She is. So she how, how is she as a grandmother? She's awesome. Yeah. I couldn't have asked. I honestly think if she could have been a grandparent first, right. she may not have been quite so embarrassing for me and Devin growing up. <laughs> embarrassing. Oh, come on. She's not embarrassing. Oh, come on. <laughs> she, she is. <laughs> On an embarrassing scale, one to ten, ten being uh, the most tamified you can get, how embarrassing is your mom? Um, at times she can be a nine. I would describe myself as one big, 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 hot mama. Calling Paul is something that she lives for, so right. I don't let the embarrassment get me, get the best of me. I love my mom. She's crazy. She's a good time. All my friends are like, you've got the coolest mom ever. Right. But then there are those times where, you know, it's... Oh, what's that song? What's that song? Big bottom lambing. People reach different levels of celebrity, and there's a certain kind of celebrity that goes by just one name, by just your first name. You have Oprah, Madonna, Tammy. Oh, whatever. Tammy, <laughs> Tammy you're a one-name celebrity. There are very few of these. Paul's not a one-name celebrity. He's Paul Feinbaum. You're Tammy. What does that mean? It means you're it means you're up at the the high level of celebrity. Oh. Yeah. Mom talks. Right. A little bit, and we'll be she'll be saying something, and 90% of the time somebody stops her, and you're Tammy from Feinbaum. A day for Tammy would not be complete without a phone call to Paul Feinbaum. Tammy is up next. Uh, hey, Tammy. Paul. Hey there. You are wrong. I'm gonna tell you right now you're wrong. You might predict the seven to five, but we're going nine to three because we're going, we're gonna finish out the game. Tammy, do you, know, Tammy do you know how, how tiring and boring and pathetic your calls about how great Auburn is going to be uh, are to the let audience? Me, let me tell you something, Bon I don't care what you say, but I'm telling you that we're going to, if LSU's going to, I'll tell you what, LSU's going to finish Alabama this week. And when Alabama, LSU gets through with Alabama, and we're going to get through with Georgia and Stanford, and then we're going to get y'all again. We're going to get y'all. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't care how boring you get, but let me tell you something, fine ball. You are a, oh my God, you are strictly nothing but a bam. You ain't no good for nothing. Because all you want to do is take up for Bama. This? That's all you want to do. That's all you ever do is take up for Bama. That's all you ever do. We're not do even talking about will. Bama here. We're I talking you about what? your team. Screw Bama. Huh? Paul, all I say, go LSU, go LSU. Come on, Tigers, let's go, Tigers. times I've listened to it where she's like, you have to hear what I said, and other than that, I try not to. Well, Tammy is unconcerned about anything. I mean, she's, she's fun. I mean, she's hilarious. War Eagle, baby! Read it is time for rapid fire questions with Bill Bubba Bussy. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> if Alabama loses the BCS championship game, will there be a third matchup for double or nothing last game we promised? No. Okay. Why isn't your show called Bubba and Rick? Because uh, Rick was doing it by himself. I was a mild-mannered engineer. I joined the show later. Which lasts longer, the XFL or a piece of Rick and Bubba beef jerky? A uh, piece of beef, Rick and Bubba beef jerky. All right. I don't need to squat to give you the answer, do I? <laughs> Probably not. I am freezing my beef jerky off right now. Okay, good. Fair enough. What's the difference between Auburn and Alabama? The colors of the uniforms. Okay. <laughs> and about 100 miles. <laughs> You don't have to talk into it. I want to talk into it. I like that furry bike mug. I love it. All right, here we go. Ready? I don't know. Right. Up. Who would you say was Auburn's best player this year that was also a son of your partner? That would be number 63 or number 86, Blake Burgess. All right. All right. Which is a better system, the BCS or communism? Uh, I would go with uh, neither. Okay. Between you and Greg McElroy, who could throw a frozen turkey the farthest? That would be me. All right. Would the world be better without place kickers? 
Uh, no, I like the excitement to see if they're ever going to get it through the goalpost or not. They're not. If Alabama had to pick just one mascot, what do you think they would keep? The Crimson Tide, Big Al, or the Nick Saban statue? I would say Nick Saban statue, hands down. Good answers, yeah. and you know what I like? He talks right in the microphone every time. Do you like the way I squat so I go out of camera when I do it? <laughs> It it's that awkward. or the fact I'm trying not to blow off this freaking statue up here. Let's go ride the <laughs> elevator. Let's do it. Let's All do right. it. Later. Bill Bubba Bussy, thanks for continuing to be with us. Uh, a little warmer in here. I'd like to ask y'all 20 questions. If oh, you don't mind, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, yeah, during the next break. <laughs> well, I enjoyed that beautiful view of town from up there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a 200 mile an hour wind. <laughs> now, tell us, growing up, did you, who'd you root for? Did you have a team? Well, growing up, um, my whole family w was Alabama fans, okay? So I think I became an Auburn fan to, to, to aggravate them. Gotcha. And this they is tried, the Tammy yeah, thing, yeah, by the way. Yeah, and they yeah. tried to brainwash me. I remember I went with my dad and one of our neighbors. The first big football game I'd ever been to was at Legion Field. Alabama and Tennessee were playing. Johnny Musso played. I don't know what year that was. It may have been 69 or 70. I'm going to look it up with your crack staff here of 900 sure, yeah. people. <laughs> and uh, uh, by the way, can I tell you, thank you for having me on the show oh, because I, I think everybody in Alabama has been on the show but me and Gary Harris. So That's uh, right. I, I'm, I'm thankful for the invite. And uh, I could tell the list was getting low here. But uh, so anyway, we go to the game and it's, you know, it's awesome. It's just an awesome experience. And, and they said, oh, you got to come down and see Bear come out of the locker room, right? So they got this screen, you know, it's like chain link fence. And I'm a little kid, you know, probably eight or nine. And I go up there and the crowd is just pushing me and I'm about to grade through the fence, you know, and I think, hey, I'm trapped. I mean, it's a and out comes Bear and he walks out. It's pretty, it's a pretty impressive thing. But I, I think I had so many uncles that aggravated me about it. I, I became an Auburn fan just to get back at him, I think. And, and it was a tough time. Uh, that's, that's about <laughs> when Barfield came along. Oh, and wow. I was into to Auburn so much, I would physically get ill when they lost. You were and sick you were getting so I was, a, I was a sickly child. Yes, thank you for stealing my line. But it's, um, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, it uh, got a little older. I started uh, meeting some of the guys on both of the teams, and I realized they didn't take it as serious as fans did, so I kind of let go. Now I'm a fan of football, and I don't take it as harsh as I used to. So, so speaking, though, of Alabama, of course, they will be playing for the national championship this year. A yes. lot of Alabama fans are very excited about the potential of winning their 14th championship. And, of course, first this year, they'll have to win their 9th, and then 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and then eventually their 14th. Right, right. Now, you got to be people, careful how you count those mm, national well, championships. I think that was in the row. Yeah. All right, so here's the question is, do you feel like there's any concern about this being a legitimate championship? Some people have said, oh, this is going to be like some of their older ones. Oh, no, no, really no. Count. No, th this is legit. This is the system, whether we like it or not. It's what we live under. you got to go with it. It's a championship game. You know, in basketball, teams may play each other during the year. They get to the finals. I know some people have said, hey, if you win, it'll be one LSU, one Alabama. we still got to settle it. No. Nah. Championship game, the best two teams are there. What's happened prior to this is out, winner take off. This whole, you know, rivalry between the two schools has gotten out of control. And I wonder, do you sort of see that manifested on your radio show? This time of year, do people kind of go a little bit crazy in this You know, state? people are always out of control about their football. But, uh, and I'm sure some people take it too serious. We don't. So, you know, it is what it is. And uh, Rick has said many times, and I agree, I have kids coming along. He does. If they end up at Alabama, Roll Tide. If they end up at Auburn, War Eagle. I can Gator. I can Rocky Top. You know, I can do. I can hunker down. Whatever I need to do. <laughs> can I you do the Vanderbilt. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if y'all. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if y'all. You'll work for me one day. I don't know if you've priced a college education lately. I will go where the goods are. Okay, let's be clear. I'm a dad for hire. Okay, now. Earlier we talked a little bit about these problems that we have in college football with the legitimacy or lack of when it comes to these championships. And some people have argued that a playoff would help to fix all of that. Abs What's I'm a playoff guy. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, I, you know, it's all about the money, guys. Okay. The colleges control the bowl games. They don't want the NCAA in that. The NCAA controls basketball. They don't get a cut of that. It's all about the dollar. You know, you've heard the saying, follow the money. I've never understood the money argument because it seems like you're adding more games. You can keep all the bowl games that exist already and just use a couple of them, add a couple extras as playoff games. Well, so I know Division sense. Two. you know, they used to have like Hello the well. Grantland-Ross Bowl, yeah. you know, whatever you call it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and you, you won it and you go the next round with some other bowl 
game. I mean, let the, let the big four be the semifinals. I'd rather argue about if the eight or nine team, who that should be, than the number two team. You know, and play it on the field. Who knows? You never know till you play it on the field. So speaking of a game being played on a field, we've got one coming up in about 18 weeks, yes. uh, the national championship game. Game of the century, do Yeah, part, <laughs> part two. Yeah. Who's going to win this game? I think Alabama's going to win it. I think Alabama outplayed LSU the first time. Um, it, it's going to be a tough environment. It's going to be an LSU home game. Mm -hmm. They won their last championship down there. They think they're a team of destiny, and uh, it will be interesting. It's going to be a, an all-out war again. Yeah. Even, a, even a good Auburn fan enjoyed that first one. That's a oh, good game. Oh, sure. Absolutely. You know. All right. Not that we would know because we're both big Tulane fans. Tulane fans. Now, right. Go Green, Green Wave. Wave. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. New coach, Curtis Johnson. Very exciting. Yeah. Bubba, exciting. thanks so much for being here. This hey, fun. thank y'all. For sure. Up what are next, we doing next hour? Well, we're going to Innisfree for the Innisfree Trivia Minute. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I want to stay here. Stay tuned for more of the Iron Bowl Hour. Reed, before we take a cab down to Innisfree, we need to congratulate Randy Hunter. He correctly guessed that 1964 was the first year the Iron Bowl was broadcast on TV. Yeah, smart guy. Yep. And viewers, don't forget, you too can be a winner just like Randy Hunter by correctly answering this week's trivia question and submitting your answer either to the email address or phone number at the bottom of the screen. Is the cab here? I hope so. It's cold outside. Let's get in it. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Carrie. And I'm Nick, and this is your Innisfree Trivia Minute. Your question for the week is, in the history of Alabama and Auburn football, how many Iron Bowls have been played? A, 74, B, 75, C, 76. Good luck. Well, that is all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank Bill Bubba Bussey for being here. And I'd like to thank Coach Nick Saban. The coaches poll came out, the TV yeah. ratings this week. He voted us fourth best show in the local market. I thought we are going to come out second. Uh, no, fourth. I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle Reed. War Tide, Will. Vulcan Park and Museum. Introduce your family and friends to Birmingham's icon this holiday season. Vulcan Park and Museum will open at 1 p.m. Thanksgiving Day. For hours and admission, log on to www.visitvulcan.com. Hi guys, I'm Carrie. And I'm Nick. And this is your Innisfree Trivia Minute. Your question for the week is... Oh. <laughs> How many Iron Bowls ever? Sorry. Hi, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. And this is the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that takes one ladder out of the... beyond. Oh, son of One ladder. Ladder. It's a go. letter. Hey guys, I'm Carrie. And I'm Nick, and this is your Innisfree Trivia Minute. Your question for the week is... Oh, crap. <laughs> this is okay, ready? This is her major. Ready? 